SEO reporting for your clients can be done a million ways, but it's all about achieving the perfect balance between being insightful and transparent, but displaying information in a clear and clean way. This is the SEO report I use with my clients, and I'm going to teach you how to make it, as well as giving you a template so you can use it yourself. So let me show you. Looker Studio is a great tool from Google that lets you display data from different sources. So the first step is creating an account in all those different sources so the data can flow. First thing is actually get the correct access and logins to be able to set up the report. First, you'll need access to Google Analytics. It's as easy as searching the keyword and it's this first result right here. And then once you click inside, you can create your account here if you want or sign in if you have an account. Exactly the same thing with Google Search Console, you click, and then you can start right there and log in or create an account. And the same for Google Tag Manager, as well as the mighty Looker Studio. That's where the report will be created. You go in there and create an account. There's a chance you already have a Google Analytics or Search Console account created. The only thing you need to make sure is that the Google account you use to create the Looker Studio has access to Google Analytics and Google Search Console. If it doesn't have access, you can go to your current Google Search Console, for example, that is created with another Google account and go to settings right here. And in users and permissions, you can just give access to that email. You've created the Google Looker Studio. And in Google Analytics, you just click down here in the admin and then under account and management, you can just add it. The reason I say this is because Looker Studio is extremely sensitive to access and logins. So if you don't have everything set up, not only the Looker Studio, but the data sources, the correct Google account Account, it will not work and it's such a mess. I've gone through all these headaches, so I'm saving you time. The data we're going to use to populate our amazing graphs is coming from two sources, Google Search Console in this case and Google Analytics. So before we get to this, we need to actually connect the data sources. So once you have your Looker Studio account, it should look something like this. And then under Create, you might want to click Report, but first is this one, Data Source, and then you can see it gives you an amazing amount of actual data sources. This is the main benefit from Looker Studio. You can create your own graphs and everything from so many different sources. But R1 is Google Analytics right here. You just click, and if you've done the first step correctly, the email you've used in this account right here should have access to Google Analytics, right? So it should appear here and you just click two, three, and then connect it. And then you do the same with Google Search Console. You just have to scroll and the same thing, it should appear here and you just have to click it here. And in this case, you need to click URL, okay? So URL, then web and connect. It's that easy. Now we're ready to start creating the report. So create and finally report. It's gonna open a blank page and it's gonna tell you to connect the data sources. And here's where you're gonna connect the ones we already added. So you go to my data sources and both of them should appear there. So if you do Google search console, you click, you add, and it's gonna tell you free form or responsive. I just do free form and it's just gonna add a graph for you. You can just delete it. And then to add analytics, you go to add data, again, my sources, and it should appear right there. I'm not sure why it doesn't let you do both at the same time, but it's like that. So you click that, I just want freeform. He adds a graph and that's it, okay? An advice here is to cross check every step you do because if something breaks, it will just tell you it doesn't work and you don't know why. So to check everything's connected, go to resource, manage data sources added, and both of them should appear. If it's like that, then you're good to go. So let's add the cool charts right here, add chart. And in this case, the one we're gonna use is the chart basis with that shows data in a specific timeline of time. So you can put it like that. So the data that is gonna show in this chart is gonna come from Google Search Console. Dimension, we keep it as date and the metric, the actual data point is going to be queries, the amount of keywords that we rank for. Here's the thing that's super cool about Looker Studio, because if you look at actual Google Search Console, there's not a possible way to see how many keywords you rank for. You can see the clicks and the impressions, but not the amount. So essentially using Looker Studio, you can see something that you would not be able to do with the official account. Down here, you can choose the days. It can be automatic as the last 28 days. So it keeps moving or you can do it fixed. For me, I do it fixed from this specific date and then every day that passes shows in the graph. An important thing to mention is that you want to add year, month and then date because date will be the one that shows you day by day. 
but if you add year and month, you'll see a little arrow right here that if you click, instead of showing you throughout every day, it actually shows you the data per month. Again, that's another thing that you simply cannot do in Google Search Console. So you start to see how this is a next level report. So to add that, you just click drill down and then erase the year and you have these two. And finally, cross filtering. Click that in all of them that we're gonna create. If you do that, it's actually gonna let you do this cool thing where once everything's created, you can select a specific page and you can see all the data changes for that page only, except the Google Analytics in this case. In terms of editing it so it looks like my one right here, don't worry because I am gonna give you a template at the end of the video. So you'll probably just work with this right away. So you have the yellow and the dark added. So the next step is just to duplicate the graph but at different data points. So the most top of the funnel data source to add is how many keywords do we rank for? After that, it comes how many impressions these keywords give us. An impression is simply a link of your website appearing in the screen when someone searches. So right now I searched Coliseo and it would have counted as one impression here and here. If I scroll down and another link from my website appeared, it will count as a third impression. So essentially it measures the overall exposure that these keywords are bringing you. And this exposure turns into clicks. That's the next step. First you run for the keyword, then you appear, and then finally someone just clicks and lands in your website. So that is that third report that you see right here, which by the way, for clicks, you need to choose URL clicks, and for impressions, impressions. Then before we get into Google Analytics, you just add another graph that is going to measure the average position of a keyword. Normally the average position is not really useful to know, but it becomes relevant thanks to the next two graphs we're gonna add. So in this case is this chart right here, a pivot table, and we're gonna connect again the Google Search Console, and you need to add landing page and see the impressions, the clicks, and the queries right here, as well as the total, and finally the timeline. I will use the same timeline I use for the other graphs. And finally, this one right here, that is from Google Search Console again, but what we're getting is the query, and from the query, we're getting the impressions, clicks, and average position, and everything's the same. So when nothing's pre-selected, the data you're seeing here is for the whole website. And because of this, in this graph, you don't really know what URLs are bringing this amount of impressions and clicks. But if you look down here, you can actually see what URLs, but now it's divided by URL. So the next level feature is that now clients can interact with the report. So let's say they see the whole performance, but they look here and they wanna see, oh, what you're also bringing this, so they can see that, but now they can click here and everything will change to only showcase the data of that URL. But even better, they can actually select the URL, but also instead of the data for all the keywords that they rank for, per keyword. So if they click here, now they see the performance of that URL for that keyword. And that's where this graph right here becomes relevant. Because an average position is not really helpful. But once you start to add specific filters, now it's not so much of an average, right? Because it's the average position for a day for a specific URL for a specific keyword. So there's a higher chance you're gonna get the actual position that you rank for. Keep in mind that's still an average. The same day someone, you could appear number one, and for another person, number 10. But keep in mind that that's not really usual. So essentially, this graph has become a rank tracker you can actually trust. And now we're gonna track SEO conversions, in this case using Google Analytics. This is something I didn't use to add in the reports because it wasn't possible and it drove me crazy. Because what the report was saying is that the most valuable data point was the clicks. We didn't get more info from that point on. But that's not true. SEO brings traffic, but it's the responsibility of an SEO to make sure that that traffic converts because your client needs to make money. So that means you need to track the conversions that come from SEO. The issue is that Google Search Console doesn't give you that data. That. It stops at clicks. So it's actually Google Analytics the one that gives you that information. But it's pretty straightforward. You add the same graph you added for Google Search Console and you select Google Analytics as the data source. Same information here, but then the data you're trying to pull is the conversions. So one important thing here, I'm not really sure why, for certain situations, it's called different. So there could be three names for that conversion, okay? There's a high chance it will be key events because you probably have the most updated Google Analytics version. So at the moment it's called key events. But in other cases, it might actually be called event count, okay, that might be it or it could be conversions. You can see for me, it doesn't appear, but for clients who have the old analytics, it is called conversions. The great thing is that whichever one you choose, you're gonna know if it doesn't work because it'll be grayed out essentially. And then everything else will be the same. The only issue that is like, no, I wish it was possible, is that I've tried my best, but 
it's not possible to add this graph in the cross filtering because it's another data source. So as you see here, I'm clicking this URL and everything changes except that. I have tried myself with blending data sources. That's a thing that Google Analytics offers, but it doesn't work. Like I've tried my best. I watch all the tutorials that are there. So yeah, it doesn't work. You need to let the client know that when they click something, everything will change except that, which means that what they're seeing here is the conversions for the whole website, not for that URL only. So I've explained this assuming that you are tracking conversions with Google Analytics and Google Tag Manager if it's needed. If you're not, instead of explaining the whole thing, I put a link in the description where you can actually see how to set it up. It's pretty straightforward, but there's some details. Because if your conversion is simple, you can just use Google Analytics. For example, if they land in a specific page, like thank you page, you can set that up and it will start to appear in Google Analytics. If it's a little bit more complicated, like filling up a form, you might have to set up that tracking via Google Tag Manager and connect it to Google Analytics. Don't worry, it sounds scary and crazy, but it's easy. This video will show you there's no way you won't be able to do it after this. So now we can correctly assume that you are tracking your key events and this is what you're pulling from Google Analytics. If you have several conversions and you just want to know the main one, you need to play with the filters, which is the next step. So in this case, filters in Looker Studio are absolutely crucial. First, because it's going to let you create different tabs and keep track of the analytics of different set of pages instead of just the whole website. And secondly, because if you don't use them, the Google Analytics conversions is not going to be true. So what I mean here is that once you scroll down, you need to add two filters. The first one is the one that's going to bring transparency. If you think about it, if you don't put any filter, it's going to give you all the conversions from Google Analytics, wherever they come from, even if they come from Google Ads or social media. But you want to know the ones that come thanks to SEO. So for that, it's pretty simple. You just add a filter and then you select the data source Google Analytics. It must include and then the session default channel equals to and it's called organic search. So you just type that with both capitals there. And if you didn't add anything else, like I said before, it will bring all the conversions and key events. If you have several, it will be several. But in this case, if you only have one, you need to add the name. So in this case, Google Analytics include event name. Or again, if event name doesn't work, try key event. It might be like that equal to, and then the name that you added when you created the event, watching that video I told you with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. It must match exactly. If not, it won't work. Again, the great thing is that you can check all of this if it doesn't work. Let's say I was in Google Analytics and I went to my website to do a conversion to test. It will probably appear here after a few minutes in the real time overview. So you made sure there's an event and the name of the event will appear there. But then if it doesn't appear here, it means it didn't work. Just make sure, of course, that when you do that test event, you land from SEO. So search your website in Google, click and do an event, because remember the only events that are appearing here are the ones from SEO that come from Google. Once we have that working, it's all sub, you just need to create the different tabs. The great thing is that it's super easy. You can essentially just click here and you should have only one and you can just simply duplicate. And once you duplicate, the whole thing will appear again. What I do is always separate the whole SEO strategy between informational pages, which tend to be blogs and transactional pages. And for some clients, they already had a website. So I then divide between my pages, the ones that I created or I optimize and the ones that are not optimized yet. So for the informationals, it's pretty simple. You just have to go to the filtering, scroll down and add the URL that triggers those informationals. So in this case, you will go Google Search Console, landing page contains. And if your website has all the blogs under a path, normally it will be slash blogs, slash guides or whatever, it's gonna add in this report, every single URL that has these in it. Then you can just do that again for all the Google Search Console graphs that you have and you're good to go. And don't forget to do the same in the one for Google Analytics. So you add a third filter right here, which is coming from Google. They need to do this, but the landing page, so where they land must contain and then that part of the URL. Now, what if your blogs are not under a path and they're all under your domain? If that happens, I want to say I'm sorry for you because it's such a mess, but there's no way around it. So all you have to do is in your filters, in your tab, you add a filter right here that says from Google Search Console, it must include landing page and then regex contains. Then all you need to do is add the URL slag 
So that is the URL part right here without the domain. And the reason you're doing it is to save character spaces. And then for example, I've added one here and then you need to add this bar right here and then the next one and then another bar and so on. And the problem is that there's a limit on characters here. So the great thing though is that once there's a limit, it will go red, I think it did. So you need to click or and then add a new one and add all your URLs like that onwards. The huge shortcoming here is that you need to manually populate this data every time you create SEO pages. If all your blogs were under blogs, then you told it to just grab every single point of information of a URL that's under that. So it populates on its own. So it's the big shortcoming. I hate it when clients don't have their blogs under a path, but it might happen, so be ready. And then essentially that's it. The whole logic applies again for transactionals, where you would put the URLs that are transactionals if they are under a path. For example, with e-commerce, you tend to have transactional pages under categories or products. So you can put include every URL that contains products and that's it. And then with informationals before and after Alex, which you can change the name once I give you the template, is the same logic I've explained with the clients that don't have the path where you would add here every URL that I've created or optimized and in the before Alex tab I will put every URL that was there before me and what's crucial is that if we optimize an old URL we need to go and take it off from the before Alex tab and add it in the Alex tab because now I've done something for that page to rank better essentially. So here it is, how to download and set up my template easily so you don't have to do everything we've explained in the video. So first go to my description in the YouTube video that I've uploaded and you'll have the link there. So once you open it, you should see something like this, the actual report that I have. But you can see you cannot edit it, right? So all you have to do is go to the top right and then make a copy. And here's where we begin with the nonsensical things that Looker Studio does. I'm not really sure why it shows three data sources because I've added two, right? No problem, I know how to fix it. I know that the first one that you need to add is Google Search Console. So the first one here is meant to be my search console Console, so you need to change it for your search console. That's really important. The second one is meant to be the Google Analytics. So you need to add your correct Google Analytics and you select it. And then finally, the unknown, you just leave it like that, okay? The important thing is that when you make the copy, you need to see that stuff works. So assuming you have a Google Analytics and Google Search Console with data already, you can see that it should show the data. Here's the data for the Google Search Console and in Google Analytics, it's there also. If there's any case that something doesn't work, it will appear grayed out, okay? If that happens, all you have to do is go here again and essentially just choose another one. So Search Console for Search Console, but then Google Analytics for the third one, okay? Instead of the second one. The reason I'm saying this is because yesterday when I tested everything for this video, Google Analytics was the third one. But just now I tried it and it didn't work, so it's the second one. So the good thing is that we have a solution, it's pretty straightforward, but expect nonsensical things from Looker Studio, which is the next one. If you go to Google Analytics here, if there's a chance that it might have changed it for conversions. If you look at my initial report, the one I was, the one I'm using with my account that I was using for the video, you can see that when you click here, key events is selected. But for whatever reason, when you make a copy of it, it changed it to conversions. So, you know, like I said at the beginning, if conversions get the data that you want, I don't care what the name is, make it conversions. Just keep that in mind. Remember that if things don't work, once once you do that check, that you do a test conversion and see if it appears here. If it doesn't appear, test to changing it to conversions or key events or event count. And boom, you will have access to everything with your data added here. The only thing you have to do is essentially add the correct filtering for your website. So for example here, I don't know what your website uses, so I didn't add the filters. So you need to go here and view again the section of the filters that was before to set them up correctly. If you get any problems though, let me know in the YouTube comments and I'll try to solve them because I expect problems. I think you can already see the amount of headaches this tool has given me, but it should be pretty straightforward. And if you want something like this done in your website and do a full SEO strategy, go to my link in the description and you can check my four SEO pricing plans. And now it's your turn. Let's go.